Hello and welcome back to Wheeler Scientific. In today's video, we're going to be discussing my RFID chip implant and answering some commonly asked questions that I get about it. It's quickly approaching about two years that I put in my RFID chip implant and one of my Discord members wanted an update on it. So here I am making a video on the subject. The number one question that I get asked, which is kind of silly once you understand the technology, is am I scared of being tracked by the government or can I be tracked with it? The simple answer is no. RFID is a passive technology, which means it has to be powered up before you can read the data off of it. So no, I can't be tracked. You do carry around a cell phone every day, which can be tracked very easily. So to answer the question why RFID can't be tracked is because, because it is in fact a passive technology, which means for 99.9999% of the time, it's not actually on. It has to be energized before the data can read off of it. So how an RFID badge works is there's a chip in there which is connected to a copper coil. This copper coil both acts as the power source and the transmission line for the code. So when you bring your chip up to a reader, that reader is outputting energy, so then the chip collects that energy through wireless, turns on the chip, and then sends the data back through the line. And then the badge is read. And only the data that's stored on the chip is given to the reader. So it has no location data and no other special data. Only what's been put on the chip and programmed to it can be read off the chip. So there's no way to triangulate where the chip is. You could theoretically power it up and read the data off of it, but if you don't know what the data is for, then it's pointless. You could also encrypt the data, which would make it also pointless to read it if you're not the primary reader or the device that needs the code. A really cool technology that uses RFID technology is wireless payment. So if you go to those places where you just tap your card on the reader, that's using RFID technology. You could also use that, shrink it down, and put it into your body as a chip. The company Dangerous Things, the one that made the chip that I put in my hand, is in the development process for making RFID technology for payments. And I think at this time of making this video, they have released a few different devices for that purpose. Another way of looking at it is that RFID is a fancier lock and key. So you have your lock, which is the RFID reader, and then the key, which is the RFID badge. So the key isn't constantly outputting that. It's the key that fits that. It has to be put into the lock before it can be read as the key for that purpose. But the similarities end there where RFID technology can be read by external sources. Like if you take a reader, you can clone badges through that, or if you bring it up to a computer, you can read what's the code on that, which you can draw similarities between if you go to like a place that makes keys and you stick your key in there and you get a clone of the key. Now on to the next question that I get commonly asked is, do I use it often? And to answer that, yes, I do. I use it constantly. I use it in my everyday life and I use it at work. So to answer the everyday life question is, I have cabinets at my house that I have RFID locked. So I can't open them with a physical key. You can't open them if you don't have an RFID badge to it. And the only person that has an RFID badge is me and it's in my hand. So therefore, I'm the only person that can open it. I bring my hand up to the cabinet and it unlocks. And then I can access what's in it. This is great for storing chemicals and different materials that I don't want regular people touching. Now I just so happened to clone the badge that I used at work and put it onto my hand. So then I use that for both my cabinets and my clock and puncher at work. So all I have to do when I go to work, hit clock in, put my hand up there, and I'm clocked into work. People love to stop and ask me questions like, how did you do that? Do you have your badge hidden somewhere? Where's your badge at? No, it's in my hand, and it's a great conversation starter that people have so many questions about. So yes, I think it's quite useful technology. Now, this isn't for everyone. It's I don't use it. 24 7 I only use it in the different applications that I mentioned to where if I need to open up a cabinet 
but with RFID technology, there's a lot you can do with it, not just cabinets. Like I mentioned before, there's the touchless payment where you can do that. Which this leads me into the next question that I get asked constantly is, was it worth it? Um, yes and no. As I mentioned before, it's really not for everyone. It's if you want to have more of an augmentation to your body. You can simply bypass this by just carrying around an RFID badge, but if you're a tech enthusiast and you want to do it, I don't see why not. Go ahead and get a chip implant. But, as I said, not really for everyone. It's a cool thing, but it's not necessary for life, as people lived a long time before these came out. But I could see it becoming a quite useful technology in the near future, so then you don't have to carry around a wallet, you don't have to carry around any payment methods, you don't have to carry around any IDs, you just have it at your fingertips in the chip in your hand. I can't wait to see how the technology advances and how we get more information stored onto little chips that we can read off in different sectors. I know this kind of seems dystopian and kind of sounds dystopian, but technology advances and people change with it. So it's really up to you if you want to do it, but I personally think it's a pretty cool technology as I will have one in my hand. Another thing that I get asked is, do you feel it in your hand and does it hurt or anything like that? And to answer that one, no, I can't feel it whatsoever. The only time I can feel it is if I take my other hand and I push it up with one hand and I feel it with the other. So other than that, I don't really notice it and I most of the time I forget that I even have it in my hand until I go, oh, I can do something with my RFID chip here. I have a few ideas for different projects that I want to try with RFID technology and including with my hand chip, but I don't know if I'm going to film those and put those on YouTube. If that's something interesting and you want to see more on the subject, I could totally do that. And now I'm going to go more into in-depth with the process of putting the chip in. Now, it's a large hypodermic needle that you push into the underneath the skin. It's a subdermal chip, so it just sits right below the skin above the muscle. And I was asked if it hurt when I put it in or what I can compare the pain to. So it really wasn't that bad for me. Then again, I do have a very high pain tolerance when it comes to things like that. So it was pretty quick and simple. You just push the chip in. And I would compare it to getting a large cut on something, such as your leg and arm. But the pain lasts for a bit longer as you need to wait for it to heal. It takes about 30 days for you to be completely healed and for you to be back to up to normal running, like a normal wound would. There was some soreness in my hand for about the 30 days that it took for it to heal, but after a week I could use my hand regularly, but I noticed there was a something slightly off. But now that we're approaching about two years, I have nothing wrong with my hand and I can't really feel any different. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. This is a more laid-back science discussion video about technology. If you want more questions answered, just throw them in the comment section below, and I'll be more than happy to answer those. As always, have fun exploring the science field, and if you want to check out my Discord server, the link is in the description, or you can direct message me and ask me questions there. There are a bunch of people over there that have a wide variety of scientific interests, so if you have questions, just drop over there and we'd love to discuss anything science related. Well, I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever.